So uh, polar coordinates and polar graphs, most of what we're going to talk about here is going to be review from your pre-cal stuff. Um, but it's still, uh, I think, worthwhile to, 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 to discuss it before we really get into the calculus part of, of this topic. So um, just basic graphing polar coordinates. Um, they're in the form of a radius and, and a theta, and an angular measurement. Um, we start our angular measurement in the first quadrant, so you can think of the unit circle, really. Um, and the radius tells us how far away from the origin we are. And so what you like to do is, is uh, think of this angular measurement. Imagine yourself standing at the origin. And first, you turn to face the direction that's indicated by the angular measurement, in this case, 5 pi over 3. So I'm going to turn, I end up looking at 5 pi over 3, and then I'm going to walk forward four paces. So think about walking that direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, so point A is there. And then we can do the same thing for 3, 7 pi over 6. So we start here, we turn toward 7 pi over 6, we walk forward 3, 1, 2, 3 units. We can also have uh, negative radius. So 5 pi over 4, if we turn to face 5 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 is located here between 7 pi over 6 and 4 pi over 3. So we turn to face in that direction, but now we're facing that direction, but we take, uh, we move backwards two spaces, two units. So we're on this line, and we go one, two, backwards there. So point C ends up there. And we could also have a negative angular measurement. In that case, we would just turn uh, to the right uh, or clockwise instead of um, to the left or counterclockwise. So we go negative pi over 3. So that would take us to here, to the 5 pi over 3 line. And we're going to move forward 1 pace or one unit and so point D is there. All right. Um, next we'll talk about uh, the relationship between the angular measurements and the Cartesian or the rectangular coordinates. So we can represent this with some angular measurement that we call theta frequently. Um, we have we kind of create this right triangle. This distance is R Here's our y and here's our x, that horizontal measurement. So we know that the cosine of theta is equal to x over r. It's equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's y over r. And theta is equal to y over x, opposite over adjacent. So we can solve these for x, y, and r. Um, if, I, if I take a look at the cosine, uh, relationship, I have x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Most, uh, Many of you have probably seen these um, not only in your pre-calc classes but also probably in your physics classes as well. When you're talking about uh, vectors or, or uh, vertical and horizontal components of velocity and things like that. Um, we know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared by the Pythagorean theorem, so r squared is square root of x squared plus y squared. All right, so knowing these, we can take, uh, knowing these relationships, we can take uh, a polar set of coordinates and convert them into rectangular coordinates. So we know that we want x, and x is equal to r times the cosine of theta. So x is equal to 2 times the cosine of 5 pi over 6. And we think back to our um, unit circle, so the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. So our x value is negative root 3. And then we know y equals r sine theta. So that's equal to 2 times the sine of 5 pi over 6. Sine of 5 pi over 6 is a half. So that's equal to 1. 
So in rectangular coordinates, we have negative root 3, 1. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. We need x and we need y. We have r and, and theta, so, so those are pretty easy. Um, converting from rectangular to polar is, uh, I wouldn't say it's hard, but we do need to take into account the quadrant. So we need to think about the quadrant um, that we are in and, and get the appropriate angular measurement. So if I think about converting 3, negative 3 first, I kind of want to think about where is that. I can see here that it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. So the angular measurement that I get needs to reflect that. Right. Um, R is, is pretty straightforward yet. R is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we plug in the 3 and the negative 3. So radius is 3 root 2. And then we have, um, you know, if we, th if we think about this a little bit, we have lots of choices. We can use cosine, we can use sine, we can use tangent. I'm going to use tangent here. So tangent of theta equals y over x. So that's negative 3 over 3, negative 1. So we need to think about the ang an angular measurement whose uh, tangent is equal to negative 1. And if you think about, again, our unit circle, think about sine over cosine. This means that the sine and the cosine have to have the same magnitude, but opposite signs, right? And so that will happen when we have, oh, sorry, we're off the page, 7 pi over 4, or we could call that negative pi over 4. So that puts us in the proper quadrant, right? Um, Let's see, we could also get an angular measurement that was in the second quadrant, which for which this would also be true. We'd also have tangent theta equals negative 1, so we need to be careful about that. So we can write this, r theta is uh, 3 root 2. We can write it as 7 pi over 4. Or we can write 3 root 2, oh, sorry, not 3 root 3, it should be 3 root 2, um, negative pi over 4. There's other ways you could see this. So um, for a multiple choice question or something like that, it could also be, um, if you think about, uh, we could also write that as, think about the other angular measurement that's over this way. That one we were talking about in the second quadrant, that's 3 pi over 4. So if we faced in the direction of 3 pi over 4, but we moved backwards, we would end up at the same place. Right, so we could also write this negative 3 root 2, 3 pi over 4, and that would get us to the same location as these two here. Right, so any of these would be um, true. These are probably one of these two are probably the ones that we would write, but we, we could conceivably see this on a multiple choice question or something like that. So we want to be aware of, of that possibility as well.